This is a modem used by Landis and Gear Gridstream Smart Meter Networks to relay traffic across it. Adding one of these devices to the network causes other devices to send their traffic through it and relay it back. I'm going to show you just how easy it is to find the four digit code that lets you add this device to any smart meter network out there. I'm also going to show you some cool modifications I did to this to give it wireless access so you can hide it and connect to it from your phone. Turn the transmitter on and off so that it can just sniff traffic and even dump the memory that's inside here to a Raspberry Pi and save the state, almost like you would on a virtual machine to take snapshots. Now there's a lot of stuff in here. It's 10 pounds of crap in a two pound package. This is just a Raspberry Pi Zero. It's not uh, chosen for any specific reason other than it was sitting in the pile of the stuff I have and I thought, man, it'd be nice to use this for something. Inside the modem here, there's a few things you should know about. There's a lot in here, so let me just bring this other one over and show you what it has. Now it looks a little different. The can here on each one of these is where the radio transmitter and the receiver and everything is. The RF equipment is underneath that can. There's a processor on each one that is running the network stack, everything it needs to communicate. There's a memory chip and a power supply on each one. And then there's this memory chip. So this is like RAM and these are like the hard drive. And this one, it's much bigger. And this one, it's a small eight pin package. They're basically the same chip though. This one is a newer version of this one. Now I'm gonna put this thing back in its case, stuff everything back in there, hook up a battery to it, turn it on, connect it to my phone over here, and I'll show you just how cool it is to Wi-Fi to this device and to see it trying to talk to a network. It won't be able to because I have the transmitter turned off. All right, red blinking light means something's going on. Now what we're looking for is a network to pop up. It'll say Utilinet. I named the Wi-Fi that because that way it's easy to find. Oh, there it is. Hey, don't be looking at my password. It was password, by the way. In here is the configuration menu that allows you to change anything in this modem. It's accessed by controlling one of the pins inside there. And by doing that and doing it through the Raspberry Pi, I can basically wirelessly from my phone use this device anywhere. Let's take a look at the smart meter network and see what it's doing around here. Okay, so I did that and now it's booted up normally. It's asking me for this super secret uh, password. So I gotta put that in real quick, one second. Oh, looks like I got access. That super secret password, that just so happens to be in that little memory chip that I can read out now. Now there's this mode, it's called Gabby. It's called Gabby WAN. And so what it's doing right now is these S's is it trying to transmit out to the network. When I put a software defined radio connected to this antenna connector and I listen directly wired in, I can see it try to transmit every time one of those S's is sent. Now it's not transmitting now because I have this switch flipped off so it can't actually talk to anything. But it's trying to, it's trying to find a network. And when it does see some data from a network, it spits it out here on the screen. There you see it started to find something. And there is an ID of one of the smart meters that's around me. That ID, if you use my other video, would translate to a GPS coordinate of somewhere that's around here. So it's starting to synchronize. Internally, it's synchronized. It can't transmit back though. See, I have a little wire running in here. This little wire that runs inside here is allowing me to turn the transmitter on or off. I do it with this switch that's right here. Flipping it one way turns it on, flipping it the other way disables it. So it's expecting to hear messages back from these guys because it's trying to talk to them right now. It can't because the transmitter is disabled. But it's logging all of this information 
inside of its little memory chip that I can then dump out later. Now there's some other things that I have hooked up here and these are allowing me to control whether the board enters into a diagnostic mode, uh, if the board is reset or not, and then a lot of little wires right here, which is what allows me to read out this memory chip and save its state. Just like taking a virtual machine snapshot, I can take a snapshot of this at any time. I just hold the processor and reset, I read out the memory chip, and I release it from reset. The same thing you could do to write back to it at any time. Now, because it's routing this traffic across the network, anytime a new device is added, anytime a new meter is put on somebody's house, it becomes part of this network and it routes the traffic. Now, you would think high encryption, crazy code, something must be entered to add a device to a network. You don't just type in a, a little four-digit code. Well, you'd be wrong. How do you get this information? It just comes to you. This stuff just flies through the air. They send this information out. I mean, it's just beamed out all over the fucking place. You all have to do is know how to grab it. See, I know how to grab it. If you use the smart meters application that I have that runs in GNU radio, and you receive packets from your grid stream network, the CRC that's sent is actually the same four-digit code. It's not quite the same. You run it through a different application, and it spits out a new four-digit code from that CRC, which is what's used to enter into here. Now surely, it must be impossible to buy these. It must be some kind of super hacker that was able to get these things when no one else can find them. The reality is they're available on eBay. You can go over there right now. What you want to search for is the word Utilinet. Now why even release tools like this? Why even put this out there? Why show exactly how it's done? Everybody that's involved in this system already knows this. If a power company doesn't know it, if you're from the power company and you don't know it, that's too bad. Because everybody selling you this already knows how easy it is to add these devices onto a network. Now, if you're curious about the details, all the little dot in the I's and cross in the T's, how do I find the codes, exactly where did I hook things up, how did I disable the transmitter, you want to build something like this, that's over in the Patreon video. Head over there and become a patron. And you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, I'm over in Discord. If you're a patron, you decide to try to build one of these things, jump into the patron-only channel and I'll see if I can help you out if you have any questions. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video.